Well, as you can see, we have the ATC components laid out here on the bench, and in today's video, we're going to start assembling the ATC. Now, we're going to start out with the rail plate. This was uh, Mic 6. I wanted to start out with something and that I was pretty confident that it was going to be flat, and I didn't have to face it off. So we chose Mic 6. On the Mic 6, we're going to be uh, mounting some high one linear rails for this ATC. However, I did purchase some of these knockoffs. I originally looked at these knockoff rails. However, I just decided I knew what high one quality was, so I would go ahead and purchase the high one linear rails. Now, these are 350 millimeters long. They're HGH and HGR 15s. Uh, these knockoff rails, as you can see, they're really pretty good quality. You can tell that they're not high one quality. However, uh, they feel really good. They're actually a little easier to slide back and forth than the high one. Uh, it's probably due to a little bit less precision. However, this is for this ATC, as long as it's nice and tight and not uh, not racking back and forth, I think it'll be fine for an ATC. And they were about half the price of the high one. That's something you really need to consider. Uh, if you're watching this and you want to know about these knockoff rails, uh, yes, I think the quality is a little less than the high one. High one are, you know, superior rails. They've got the etching on there. These don't have any indication whatsoever of which direction you should mount them. Um, the grind looks okay. I did notice that the holes look not perfectly round. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I guess they are. It just doesn't quite look round. But the spacing is your standard high one spacing and uh, they feel pretty good. So I think they would be fine. So when I first decided I was going to build an ATC I, I told my buddy Wyatt about it, and, and uh, so we, we kind of collaborated on this project. I machined all the ATC carousel pieces, and Wyatt uh, worked on the cover and the mount. Uh, he came up with a really nice cover, and you'll see that as I'm uh, assembling. But instead of going with your standard cake pan cover, which I think is fine for, uh, for most applications, why it came up with a nice thick aluminum. Uh, I think it's one eighth inch thick, maybe a hundred thousandths. Let me check it. No, it's a one eighth inch thick, one eighth inch thick aluminum sheet. Uh, he laser cut all this out uh, and then welded this side on. Uh, he does a really good job. So that turned out really nice. So we've got our cover and then we've got a mount that he's designed as well to give us a little bit of uh, adjustability. I think it's pretty uh, neat and we'll talk about that uh, a little further on. Also, the carriage plate is using a, uh, it called for a five inch wide plate. And since we changed the design and went with linear rails instead of linear rods, the linear blocks are going to be uh, fairly close together, like so. so. I had to come up with a way to get the grease from here into here. There's not enough room for another grease fitting here, and there's no way you can get in there once it's assembled. And if I put it on this side, I didn't want to take the chance of it hitting the head. Um, so what I came up with is, this is a 1 8 inch stainless steel tube and some silicone hose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I squeeze them together, the hose will move and form like a gasket. And I'm thinking that that's going to work out just fine to kind of sandwich those in there like so. And then I'll be able to, once it's together, 
that'll prevent any leaks there and it should move the the grease should be able to move from one rail block to the other that's that's the theory behind it Let, we'll see but I think it's gonna work all right so we're gonna start assembling I'm gonna speed through this sit back and relax and we'll see how this goes together See that's really smooth and very nice and rigid. All right, that's the assembly of the rail plate, rails, and carrier plate. Uh, now we'll work on the disc here. Next up is the cover. Now this cover, my buddy Wyatt machined this cover and uh, turned out really well. He did a really good job TIG welding this up. He laser cut this and then uh, this is just some flat sheet metal, some 1 8 sheet metal that he bent around and uh, did a really good job. Okay guys, so you can see I had to take the uh, fork disc off to install the cover, but that's okay because I want to install the uh, stepper motor next and I wanted to, before I did that I wanted to talk to you about uh, a few options. Now my Precision Matthews has clear path servos on there, so obviously that's the number one option. However, that's about $380 plus shipping for one motor for the carousel. It is the easiest way to wire it up. I've already got the power supply. All I've got to do is just basically bolt it on and connect it. But I wanted to look for a less expensive alternative. And of course closed loop steppers are a good option. Uh, this particular one here uh, is a I believe it's a 1.2 uh, newton meter. Uh, very small, very compact. The only problem with the closed loop stepper is you've got this driver that I've got to try to figure out somewhere to mount. I don't want to mount it on in my box, so I'd have to try to mount it to the carousel. I'd like for this to be kind of plug and play. Another option is this integrated closed loop stepper so it has the driver combined so all you have to do is just run your power and your step and direction up to this the feedback loop is integrated within the driver so you can see it's a lot more compact of an option now both of these can be picked up at aimgood.com which is where I've got these from I'll post a link in the video description. I actually got this for the Carousel ATC and I got a couple of these. We're going to be upgrading the G0602. Now this particular option here I wanted to go with because it was integrated just like the clear pass so all I have to do is just run power and step in direction up to here. And again, I got this from banggood.com. I'll post the link in this video. So we've got our Geneva cam here. And what this does is, these are a couple of small bearings here that just ride 
like so. The nice thing about this one is it has this flat on here for the set screw. Maybe you can see how that kind of works. Get you a shot here. here it locks it into place now this needs to be lined up with the fork so when I put this on I need to make sure that I rotate it so that the holes line up with a fork like so all right guys well here is the assembled ATC there's still some quite a bit of things that I've got to work out still a few things that we've got to uh, do there's going to be a cover that goes over here but you can see I've got the closed loop stepper assembled I've got the extend and retract sensors those are connected uh, the solenoid valve I've got temporarily here but I think I'm going to end up moving this because we want to bring all our cabling into a junction box here so you can just plug it in there instead of having all these different cables running uh, down to the controller. So this may go uh, and be remotely placed somewhere. But just got a flag here that will flag this when it's extended and one that will flag it when it's retracted. Um, got the tool forks and all on and the Geneva mechanism works real well it's not as quick as a direct drive or a belt driven however mechanically it's a lot more sound I think uh, once it's locked in position it's not going to be moving um, and I was a little worried with especially with servo motors uh, clear path especially they like to try to re uh, adjust so if you were to press on this it would move and then it would spring back and adjust back to the correct position but I as this is moving in and out of the of the spindle and into the tool I don't want it to move at all so I think this is just a better overall it's gonna work out better for my particular situation uh, but yeah, it looks pretty good. So I've got the this portion about as far as I'm going to get it. I've got the AT uh, IR sensor here for the homing ring. And I've just got it with some uh, pins here. This will get wired uh, over to this jo uh, junction box that I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, it moves. It moves real easy very smooth with these high wind linear rails on here door seems to be opening and functioning really well with those thrust bearings that's under here it's nice and smooth so we're going to set this to the side and I want to talk about um, the mount that we came up with well actually why it came up with this mount and uh, it's pretty ingenious if you ask me uh, he did a really good job with this so he welded up this anchor plate here and what's unique about this mount is it's going to mount to the column here so we've got these slots here that will allow us to get a little bit of adjustment forward and backwards we've got slots here where it mounts to the uh, ATC right here we've got several 
bolts here that we can adjust uh, along the travel vertically. So that allows us to get that adjustment. Also, we've got these locking knobs here. So once you get once you get the ATC mounted, then you can come back. It's going to be sitting like this, and if you need to adjust it in and out for fine adjustment, you just get an Allen wrench. And it's got a jack screw in here. And you can just move this in and out. He designed it so it has about an inch of travel. Now what's nice is we're trying to design this ATC so that it would function on not on only on our Precision Matthews, but uh, a G0704 or a RF45 size mill. So you can see it's fairly easy to get it adjusted there. Once you got it to where you want, you can just lock these knobs in place. And it's not going anywhere. So we have uh, the adjustment here to move it in and out. And then we've also got a jack screw here to move it uh, towards and away from the spindle. Same setup and you can lock it in place. A lot of effort and a lot of work went into the mount here, but I think we both agree that it's going to give you a lot of universal uh, applications. So in the future, it'll be real easy to fine tune and adjust and get your ATC in place. That's one of the issues with these uh, ATCs and the TTS holders is you know fine tuning it and getting it just right and then once you get it just right if you have a an issue or a hiccup it's going to knock it out a little bit uh, and if that happens then you got to go through the whole hassle of adjusting it again so with this particular uh, mount if you have a little mishap it's easy to get it quickly lined back up and get it adjusted so uh, he did a really good job on this um, this is probably not the final design because he bolted all this together because we weren't sure about the length of our tubes and that, but maybe the final product will probably be uh, TIG welded. We're not sure yet, but uh, really happy with the way uh, Wyatt came up with this particular mount. So overall, we're really ready to get it mounted to the machine and we're going to start uh, getting some of that stuff figured out. We've got to get plumbing for the airlines uh, and we also need to do the electrical. nice thing about this particular ATC is you really only need three inputs, one for the home sensor, one for extended retract, and then an output for the uh, slide and an output for the power draw bar so three inputs two outputs and if you tie all your home sensors together you can probably fit them all on the C11GS however um, I decided to go ahead and get an Ethernet smooth stepper so I'm going to be switching over to that so I can have a second port and then we'll talk about that in the next video so stay tuned for that Guys, if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on the subscribe button when I post a new video, if it's something you're interested in. They'll send you a link and you can stop by and check it out. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, and leave comments. Thanks for watching the videos. Please subscribe, and most importantly, 